Hi! In this lesson, we are going to be learning about the robot drag race. So if you go down to the second page in the table of contents, you can find under the Automation and Through Programming Project 3.4, the task number two, robot drag race. I like to do this one separate from the next assignment. Now, my procedure, based on the size of my room, is to do this a little different than everybody else. What I do in this procedure is I have the students create a robot car using gear ratios to account for either torque or speed to create a car that can go a distance of 15 feet in a track that is no more than three feet wide at any time and needs to stop within three feet of the end of the line. So once it crosses the finish line, it will stop within three feet of that line. Now, the idea here is you can't just make a car that goes willy-nilly in any direction, and you need to account for speed, torque, direction, and stopping. Cars are not exactly what you think when you create a robot car. Often people think of a car, they think of four wheels and a motor. In this, is, in this instance, your car may not necessarily need to have that design. You can build a car that looks any way you want as long as it accomplishes the goal of going 15 feet from beginning to finish and does not leave the three foot wide racetrack and stops within the three feet after the finish line. It is very important that you pay attention to those goals. Also, it is very important that you take the time to look at the attached sheet when it comes to using gear ratios in your vehicles. You have two to three options about how you're going to go about this. You can go most likely with the uh, option that many of you will choose at first, which is to put a motor directly onto the wheels. This is not the best option. This is going to go very slow. That is the reason we have gear ratios. The second option is to creatively look at the ways that gear ratios work and test them out as you go, finding the best gear ratio for the car you've produced. Or the third is to come up with an entirely new idea for propelling your car from the beginning to the finish without any of the aforementioned designs. That may sound difficult, but I have seen students do the third one before. The winner is most likely going to be using the second option though. They're going to create a car that is lightweight, has a good balance of torque and speed, and has a well-designed frame so that it isn't weighted to one side or the other, pulling the car out of the lane in the three feet wide lane that is asked to be in. You will have three chances or time trials to run your car individually and the student who is best or whose car wins will be the one who has the shortest time trial. Now the, this is the first time you will be running a robot that is not attached to a computer so it is imperative that you go into the robot C settings and you go to communication mode and choose USB only. So again, in Robot C, you will go to the Robot menu, and under that menu, the same menu that you set up the, um, the platform settings, you will find a setting called Communication Mode, and you will use USB only. That will allow you, after uploading the program to the robot, to disconnect the USB, at which point you can turn your robot off and then back on, and then you can use whatever trigger you have for it to get it moving. I strongly recommend using a button trigger like the BRB button or the limit switch rather than using a rather than using the turning it off and back on to start your robot because that will make it difficult to control. When it comes to stopping your robot, there are a couple different ways that you can go about that as well. You can have the robot stop after a certain time of driving. This will require you to measure out the feet per second traveled in order to figure out exactly what the best timing is for your robot. Some of you may do this by trial and error. However, there are other ways to stop your robot. You need to think about the different ways that a vehicle can be indicated that it needs to stop or the different ways in which gears can be used to stop forward motion. If you have any questions about what the expectations are, check with your instructor and the expectations of this unit 
may have changed since this video was created. So ensure that everything you're doing is aligned with your instructor because it is their choices that take priority over what is listed in this video. Thank you.